Do you know that you can write LLM applications using Rust? I invited on my channel the maintainer of a project called Rig that has over 5000 stars on GitHub that is a library to build scalable and modular LLM applications using our beloved programming language Rust. Stop using Langchain and start using Rig. Let's get started. Today I woke up and uh, this was my good morning of the day. Greg Brockman, probably you know him, president and co-founder of OpenAI, tweeted Rust is a perfect language for agents, given that if it compiles, it's correct. I'm Josh. I'm the maintainer for an AI agent framework in Rust called Rig, the largest AI framework in Rust. In recent times, we've seen a large uptick in, you know, people being interested in AI. We support currently about 20 plus different providers out of the box, side packages for users who want to use, for example, Google Vertex, uh, AWS Bedrock. You also, of course, support tool usage uh, because we're primarily focused on agents. We also try to make the framework as idiomatic to use as possible. AI libraries are kind of very focused on boilerplate generation. For example, Langchain, it focuses mostly on trying to make it as easy as possible to make agents, right? Or, or use an LLM. But we want to make the experience as easy to integrate into a current system as possible through, you know, the Rust type system and things like that. Of course, we also support all the traditional Rust API providers, uh, Llama, CPP crates coming out, or the PyTorch Rust crates that can be integrated and stuff. There's a lot of power behind using Rust versus Python. How would you explain Rig if we were at a, a party with a cocktail in our hand? You know, how would you explain that to me, Look, like to an after party? In three words, it could be described as Langchain in Rust. And the developers just want to fight. So let, let's give them what they want. <laughs> Com compared to Python, Langchain, where does Rig offer the biggest performance gain? Rig itself will not give you that much of a performance gain. The primary use case for Rig is being integrated into other systems. You know, the last 1% that you need, basically. The main advantage of Rig is that you can integrate it into other Rust systems, which are then, you know, much more performant than Python. This is Rig, a Rust library for building scalable, modular, and ergonomic LLM powered applications, 5.3K stars, 600 forks, and about 130 contributors. We have multi tenant streaming, um, observability model providers, VEX stores, full support for a lot of different types of workflows, pipelines as well, and WebAssembly compatibility. How to get started? You can see here that we simply use cargo add rig core, which is the uh, core library at the moment, followed by a simple example you can see that we simply use tokyo main to get the async runtime tokyo is currently the most popular async runtime in rust because rust itself does not come with an async runtime features are essentially tasks that need to be polled by a executor you have a worker that kind of just lazes around he's kind of lazy his boss comes up to him and asks him hey uh, what's the status on, you know, the thing you're working on? And then the worker will like, oh, you know, I need to do some work. And then he does some work and presents it back to the boss. It's kind of like promises in JavaScript. You added this attribute on top, then now you can magically add this async keyword in front of your FN main and magically your application becomes an asynchronous application. For example, this yeah. is how Axum works also because the team from Tokyo made Axum. This is a very dry example. I like that it's uh, quite, uh, quite short. It's opening a client from an environment variable. We define this GPT-4. I think soon we should meet the GPT-5. Yeah, yeah. So I can see all the integrations here. Also the Quadrant, yeah. AWS, Google Vertex. I'm interested into the Google one. Be sure to check the project. I, I also fork the project. Uh, maybe I will work on some, some issues live. Who knows? We are here in a new project. And we can add uh, you know, the rig core. Talk to you with multi-thread. Yeah. I've already mm -hmm. added my... Uh... Open AI key as an environment variable. Don't click on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, 
the hardest part of live events is this to be careful to not uh, dox your API. We're going to create our clients, yes. so uh, open AI client from environment variable. We're going to create our agents, so find our agent GPT-5. The from environment variable actually relies on the provider client trait. Uh, fortunately, the LSP knows this by uh, default and asks me to impulse it, which is great. We can go back to building our agent. You don't need to use an enum or anything. We do provide, you know, um, a bunch of constants that you can use. Preamble mm -hmm. is in rig terms is essentially the system prompt. We kind of wanted to separate this because some providers have the system prompt added as message history. Other providers have it set as the instructions field. We wanted to kind of make it separate. This is, you're talking about the integrations with different systems. Yeah, for sure. This is the hard part where you try, you know, to basically create an interface that works with different systems. Like in the uh, previous example, we use the prompt method to send a message without any message history. We can also use the chat history as well if we wanted to attach, you know, a chat history, for example. We can, like so, with the chat method, essentially, which turns this into a prompt request with chat history. So no tools are a core part of agentic systems and using agents and stuff like that. In terms of how tools work, a tool in rig essentially implements the tool trait. We need a name, so we call this adder, and then we need an args, we need to define an argument thing here, x i32, y i32. This tool will simply just add two numbers together, but we also need to add a survey, which is for serializing and deserializing arguments. Because when you send tool requests and receive tool responses, they're all in, you know, JSON. We use the survey crate for it. And then by adding the derived function, we can simply derive it at the top here. And then for the tool error, you can use your own custom error type here. We can simply just use tool error. There isn't really anything stopping you from creating your own error type, but this is the most convenient mm -hmm. method. I hope that for everyone, everything is clear. Of course, this is not a basic uh, tutorial because I made a video on each of these things, uh, structs, uh, methods. Uh. You can probably shorten this down to a macro. The rig tool macro essentially just turns a function into like this entire really complicated thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So add. Uh, what we are calling here macro attributes uh, it's basically similar to attributes in c sharp or decorator so it's something that we put on top of a function to give some superpowers to a function you can see mm. that pretty much we just added this macro annotation it turns this simple function that adds x and y together in into a struct that essentially has the traits implemented on top of it so the tool trait is dot tool here so let's see. So I make you do this <laughs> um, as a challenge now. If you want, you can let me know if you want me to do to code like this. Because I think that people in the chat they like to see other developers to suffer. I like that we are building an AI application but without using AI. I would say to people that I maintain an AI repo, but I don't use AI and they laugh. We run the demo and it comes out with a response of five. So we are using AI to make two plus three. I love it. <laughs> In the prompt, you can write a normal prompt. Now I'm already very curious to do, for example, an axiom integration with rig. So this, you basically turn this into a web server. So we are not done yet. You th thought that we were done with the basic example, but we are not. Josh, what is this uh, project about? Last year, I was uh, recommended to read an article by, by my friend Prashanth from Lance DB, I believe, about a thing called recursive language models. The LLM is allowed to call itself and just execute code instead of using tools. The most optimal agent structures at the moment are kind of, you know, AI workflows, which are being very heavily pushed at the moment. With recursive language models, you don't actually need either of them. 
because recursive language models can call themselves, they can execute code which eliminates the need for both tools. It stores its own state in a thing called a REPL, so a read, eval, print line uh, loop. You kind of feed input into and it returns the output back to you. It can store its own context. And this demo is kind of a Rust rewrite a guess of it or a rust interpretation one shot is a crate that does essentially one thing right it's to set up one shot channels a channel that you can send one exactly one value into and then the channel will basically be finished and that's it pi03 should be to call python code it's like a ffi for python it's yes. a bridge between rust and python the primary use case for it is that you can call rust from python but what you may not know is that you can also call python with it from a rust crate uh, which is great for you know python libraries for example machine learning libraries that rust might not have that you really want to use of course request it's not a typo but it's yeah. like http yeah. request <laughs> a rig call now you know what is that Tokyo with I, not Y, is the Zikrons library for us. Tracing is for uh, for logging. Yeah. Let's see this in action. Let's uh, let's see some code. Here you can see that we uh, simply have a main function where we set up the tracing subscriber to send logs to standard out. We have a new rig RLM, a type that essentially builds on the rig agent for demo purposes. Then we have our prompt. We query it, we get the answer, and then we return the response back to the user. So here we have an agent that is the OpenAI completions model, although here we're saving tokens by using LM Studio. Although at the moment it seems to be stuck on generating still. To be honest, I hope that this will fail because I have a video on how to create a CRUD project in Flask. I think it's the first on Google. <laughs> So I'm actually hoping I'm so that sorry. <laughs> but we hey, that, it works. <laughs> Kudos to Josh. You can mm -hmm. see here that it's basically generated an app um, using Flask. It is mm. the correct decorators, I think, stores Play. the data as in memory. We generated this Python right. application using Rust with the prompt and using rig. Do you think it with some adaptation, maybe instead of Bio 3, you can even change and switch the programming language here. Yeah, 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 of course. Could you use, you know, Lua or JavaScript or basically as long as you can call it from Rust, um, it should work. You can have a sort of like fine tuning. Yeah. Like if you build many services in Python and you want, I don't know, something which is specific that you repeat on a server or any application, you can, you know, fine tune. It's a sort of like uh, interactive sort of boilerplate. I don't know if this can even edit an existing project if i put a python file inside this repo with some yeah. tweaks uh, this could be done because here we are generating the file ourselves right the file is yeah. not there can also well python scripts it can also run bash commands as well so you can pretty much do whatever you want giving an agent unrestricted access to your system is very unsafe you shouldn't do it unless <laughs> unless you are okay with your system being like you know destroyed or whatever <laughs> and having to reinstall it you um, know Josh, some, some people like to live dangerously but at least we told you <laughs> at least we told you then you do whatever you yeah. want if you're curious about rig you can check it out in the in the link below uh, don't forget to leave a star share the project i think this project is very alive they've seen uh, you other people so many contributors uh, so it might become you know the de facto star will be happy the fact of standard in building LLM applications using Rust. I like the idea that everything we do in Rust, we can, you know, just breathe fresh air because it's always efficient. So whether any everything we want to build, there is this small, uh, let's say, gap at the beginning, especially if you don't know Rust, of course. Mm. But then I like that. I love the fact because an efficient programming language will they basically will never die, like C, C++, because they, there is always a reason to use them. It's one of the things uh, that I think uh, that makes uh, efficient programming languages so interesting. I asked you, have you ever heard about RIG? Almost 70% of the people said no before this live event, so this live event was worth it. 
to let people know That's more crazy. about the <laughs> So, so I'm I, usually when I see this result, I'm happy. So it means okay. So we did something new. So now you know. Thank you so much. Uh, thank for the for, thank for the stream, Josh. You have been a superhero. I think I haven't seen anyone coding without AI. I think in at least a year and a half, including <laughs> me. So I really wish you best of luck. Uh, I'm looking forward to take a selfie together, of course, in London. Of course. That's it. Okay. Perfect. All right. See ya. Okay. Bye bye.